Thank you for joining me for the interpretation of the results concerning the VEC and variance decomposition. I have brought the e-views output here on these PowerPoint slides and have put together, that is side by side, the results from the vector error correction model and the results from the variance decomposition regression. But before I go into the interpretation, I want to keep you abreast of some certain words I'll be using during my interpretation. On the screen, I have a generalized interpretation which I've divided into two components. How do you interpret the effects of the forecast variance decomposition on the main variable, relating it to effects from other variables? So if there is a strong influence from that variable itself, that is the dependent variable, you will say that it is strongly endogenous. That is, the main variable in question is strongly endogenous. But if there is a weak influence from that variable on its own self, then such variable exhibits weakly endogeneity. Now, if there is a strong influence from other variables in the model on that particular main variable, then we say that same main variable is weakly endogenous. So when you want to interpret the impact on the main variable, you may decide to use any of these terminologies or you use the one that you can construct for yourself. Now let's look at the behaviors from other variables. If they exhibit a weak influence on the dependent variable, we say those variables are strongly exogenous. If they exhibit strong influence on the dependent variable, we say they are either least exogenous or they are strongly endogenous. So least exogenous and strongly endogenous imply the same thing. So these are some of the terminologies I will be using when I'm interpreting the variance decomposition results. Now back to our results, I will start off with the results from the vector error correction mechanism. We have here the three um, variables that make up the model. And we can see that from the cointegrating equation, the only statistical uh, significance coefficient here is the one relating to the real GDP, where we can see that it's statistically relevant at 2.787. Other cointegrating terms here for GIA and AVW are not significant, so we are not talking about them. So looking at the real GDP coefficient relating to the ECM term, it is negative at 41.99%, implying that previous year's errors will be corrected in the following year at an adjustment rate of 41.99. That is the simplest interpretation you should give to the error correction term. Now, let's look at all these coefficients here. Once you see the difference sign or the difference operator, it represents short-run coefficients. The cointegrating equation here, or the error correction term, captures the long-run equilibrium. It signifies convergence to long-run equilibrium. So that is why we always hope that the coefficient is a negative sign. If this coefficient is a positive sign, it means that model will not converge to long-run equilibrium and it will be explosive. So once you have a negative sign, it indicates convergence to long-run equilibrium. So in analyzing the vector error correction model, we can see that in the short-run relationship, there is no significant coefficient when we are talking about the real GP. Looking at the T statistics, there is none that is up to two. So there is no statistical significant coefficient here. Moving on to GIA. Looking across, we can see that the short-run uh, coefficient of GIA is significant, indicating that in the short run, GIA will exhibit a reduction by about 49% on its own self. We can see it here because it's a log-log representation. Every other relationship with respect to the GIA here are not significant. Now let's look at the AVW uh, variable. Looking across the T statistics, I can only see here that the second lag of GIA, which is Government Investment in Agriculture, this is the only significant um, coefficient relating to agricultural value added. And the coefficient is at negative 0.06, implying a reduction in agricultural 
value added per worker by about 6.4% in the short run. Now moving over to the variance decomposition results. Each row here represents the percentage of the forecast error variance by the variable indicated up here. So all the figures you can see here represents the percentage of the forecast error variance for real GDP. Same thing goes on here for percentage measurements for forecast var error variance for GIA and same thing for AVW. So that is how you read your result for the variance decomposition. Again, remember that I chose five periods, meaning I just want to forecast five years into the future. And I can also divide the period into short run and long run. So my short run could be like period one, and the long run could be period five. So my interpretation for the real GDP will be something like this. In the short run, 100% percentage of forecast error variance in real GDP is explained by real GDP itself. That's 100% explanation in the short run. That is in period one. And I can see here that contribution from GIA and AVW is strongly exogenous. Strongly exogenous implies that they have very, very weak influence on predicting real GDP in the future. If I'm to forecast, if I'm to explain what I'm seeing for the long run in period five, I can now see that the influence of real GDP on itself is dwindling the further we move into the future, while the influence from GIA and AVW are increasing as we move further into the future. So what does that tell me? It tells me that GIA and AVW are exhibiting strong endogenous influence on our GDP as we move on into the future. Strong endogenous influence. Why real GDP is exhibiting weak endogenous influence on itself. So this is the simple way by which you can interpret your result from variance decomposition. Let me move on now to uh, just AVW. It's the same interpretation. Looking at the short run, I can see here that for AVW, uh, real GDP is explaining only 5.8% of the forecast error variance in AVW, while GIA is explaining only 3.52% of the forecast error variance in AVW. So both our GDP and GIA are exhibiting strong exogeneity, meaning they have weak influence on predicting AVW in the short run. We can see here AVW predicts itself by 19.67. And as we go further into the future, the influence on GIA is coming very strong on predicting AVW, while the influence on AVW is decreasing the further we move into the future. So you can write a lot and say a lot about the outcome of variance decomposition for each variable in explaining or predicting or accounting for variation in other variables. That is all we can cover with respect to VEC and variance decomposition. I hope these tutorials have been helpful so far to help you with that assignment or with that paper you are writing or with your dissertation. Please let us have your comments and if there's any topic you want me to teach, please let me know. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing and for sharing my links. I appreciate you all for making Crunch Econometrics a success. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with more videos.